Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending on where you are. I just start my show and now I have to cough. Do you believe that? We've had um, some strange stuff in the air. I'm not sure if it's allergies or what, guys. Weird, weird stuff. You know, I think um, Huck is on to something that there's real serious good problems. We're having them up here, too. Um, I noticed a lot of lights went out in the city last night. And then our alarm went off. Of course, at like 3 in the morning, sound asleep. I'm actually going to sleep earlier and trying to get back on my health schedule. But uh, sound asleep and then the alarm goes off. And it's off since, um, God, it took like an hour. So I do have to warn you, I'm having someone come up and, and check my um, electrical connections soon. I hope it's after the show, but if I have to stop for a minute, it's not like he's going to need my help, just an explanation of what I have set up here. Um, I'll play you some music, things like that. I wanted to talk to you about a few things because there's some more stuff coming out about print. Everyone's talking about it because so much of his music points to he was having a problem and things were going to happen I need you to remember something and take some things with a grain of salt because what people are forgetting is Prince had control of his own music that is very important so what you hear or have heard from Prince came from his mind his television shows were he had control of that. People didn't make him say stuff. Other than stuff like Simpsons and episodes about him that he had no control. The messages that are in his music are from his mind, his self. And he was very, very connected in a lot of ways. What bothers me? is that he left no will. Because this is a man who was careful. He was exact about how he ran his life. He knew exactly how he was going to dress, how he wanted other people to dress when he made the prince and the revelation and the 1999 album. All of this stuff. He knew exactly what he wanted. Made people do it. He did. He told them what he wanted, and he was in charge of that. This man was in control. He also predicted that he would die under a cherry moon. That's his second movie. We had one. And Let's Go Crazy, it looks like um, we're saying the exact date that he would die. And under the cherry moon, he dies in an elevator. How does he die? It's interesting. He starts off the movie as a ho, oh, <laughs> gigolo. Well, that's a nicer word. He falls in love, tries to escape this life, and is killed in an elevator by some very, very rich men. Illuminati. He shows the Illuminati world. He shows that you could be their whore and they love you and they will give you lots of money. He was kind of showing his life because at first, even though he had musical freedom, they owned his shit. And again, what I was telling you on Tuesday, he beat them three times. I would ignore a lot of the story saying this was a hit. We know that he was sick. They're coming about. He might have been um, addicted to Percocet. I'm not buying that. He had hurt his back and his hip. 
he had had many hip surgeries. He was in constant, constant pain. If you remember how he danced when he was um, young, you know, you can't jump from on top of a speaker into the splits every day and not have to pay for that. So we know that was true. We know he was actually very sick. He had posted, please don't pray for me yet. Don't waste your prayers on me. Here's my problem. Many people have talked about his hundreds, maybe thousands of unreleased videos and archives, music, lots of them. If a record company gets them, we have our killer. They don't want his stuff. They've given that to his family. And let's talk a little bit about his family. I, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to push this too hard, if you know what I mean. But... He was taken from his family, sent into foster homes. One in particular, now he was Jehovah's Witness, and it was pretty obvious that his views and religious inklings changed over time. Now, this man here, sent um, gifts and cards to his foster mother. This is not a um, Jehovah's Witness thing. They don't celebrate birthdays and, and such things. So we know that he stepped out of this stuff sometimes. But does a man this careful not put up a will to provide for his loved ones like his ex-wife ex-boyfriend <laughs> and I know that he's already taken care of them I realize there was already stuff going on but this is a man and there's so many stories coming out right now that was so real he took financial care of Lawrence Hill family when she went to jail he wanted no publicity about this he didn't want it talked about at all Now, again, Prince died under the cherry moon, like he said he he would. This year's April twenty second, pink moon, was seen a full day before the same day Prince died. In the lyrics to the song "Under the Cherry Moon," he sings, "I'll die in your arms, under the cherry moon." Now I won't get into too much of the math work because I know it bores some of you to tears but 5757 was the Hebrew year um, 1997 the year that Prince appeared in an episode of the Muppets tonight Prince died in his 57th year so what? well the episode begins with Prince entering a lobby as he is greeted by a big Muppet bear. The entire episode seems to center around this elevator. The bear says the security in this place stinks as Prince enters the elevator. Prince exits the elevator and is greeted by a purple rain man who says in the elevator, definitely, definitely in the elevator, and points to it. Prince was found, again, in an elevator 19 years after that episode. Also, that episode, a Muppet describes a football game with white rats that turn purple and a Prince symbol on the 50-yard line. Another Muppet speaks about 41 years. Within seconds of this scene, Prince would perform at Super Bowl 41, a full decade after that episode broadcast. The crowd turned purple 
and his symbol at the 50-yard line, just as the episode predicted. This episode seems to hint also at Prince's future hip replacement, which has hurt him. My dad had one, too, and it's he said it was the biggest mistake he ever made. But anyway, his hip replacement wasn't talked about until eight years after that. But this is all from Prince's mind. This isn't predictive programming like we heard before. This is something completely different. This is Prince talking to maybe Prince. He didn't know this, but the white rats under the cherry moon he got killed by a white rat, Illuminati. People who had turned on him um, who were very rich. So we'll see. We'll see. At this point, I, I don't know. I don't know. Could have been, but Prince knew when it was, when it was coming. I think that's obvious. He knew at least on a subconscious level. But, you know, his, his latest group... He called astral travelers. He was surrounded by women because he loved them. He did. And respected them. This was a different sort of man. This was also the Batman. Remember he sang the music for the Batman? We had talked about Batman in another context, of course. Um, We had spoken of the one specifically where Batman had to rise. Ba T man. That means a combination between male and female. Not neither, but both. This was the united being. That was the symbol he used. It was not supposed to be about gay and straight. It wasn't about sexuality here. So we have to turn our minds from that. And yes, he was very sexual. Some of some of his stuff you watch and you know, you want to cover your eyes a little bit. <laughs> but this was a combined being. He knew what he was doing. He had a plan. This guy did not come light. He didn't. He walked into things with eyes open. He had a plan. He made sure that was carried out. He beat the Illuminati three times. He did. So he would have had plans. He had people around him. And the people around him gave me the same kind of shivers as the people that were around Michael. Okay, here's my guy. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, So, I don't know how close Prince was to his family. Again, this was a private man. And I find that noble. Honorable. This was also... I don't know, guys. It, It seems wrong to me. And again, I don't know how close... He was to his family. I know that the night before he died that he had actually spoke to um, Will Smith. And they had been friends for a long time. Probably a coincidence. But, you know, MTV played a marathon of Prince music videos. Which made sense. But at one point they said that their algorithm messed up he started playing Will Smith as the Fresh Prince so it sounds like that's something um, Smith and Prince would have had a laugh at together because when that played Prince was dead well you know he was dead during the whole thing but it was odd and Smith is going to be seen in this summer's Suicide Squad which is also weird this is supposed to be so disturbed that 
they've had a psychiatrist on the site, psychoanalyst, one of those people, to um, help them through it because they want them to method act this stuff. So they want them to be the character. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Now again, I know we've gone through movies and songs before, and I've talked about Prince's stuff pointing to other things. We should be aware of what's going on, but I don't think a man who was this aware, and he seemed very, very aware to me, that he would not have made a will because he's worked his whole life not to give these not let the elevator take him down not let the um, white rats take his stuff not let the people who control the black music industry which is very well actually one white guy who controls it all under many different names so that's the only part that I'm not buying and again everything else was taken care of he wanted his funeral done a certain way he had making made steps years ago to have that prepared even what he would wear to be cremated who would be there what was going to be allowed what would not be allowed so I'm still in the I don't know but his songs seem to point towards that and I don't want to do a whole show on on that it seems morbid this is this is someone I basically grew up with I know not personally I only saw him you know I saw him like everybody sees him with you know a whole bunch of people screaming when he met him the one time didn't get very close to him because um, his girlfriend wanted to kick my ass which I understand I would have wanted to kick my ass too <laughs> there was flirting going on so well I guess we'll have to wait and see I don't think he was a drug addict um, did he take things for pain yes yes if you've had a hip injury you know how that hurts but an addict being addict too shows a level of not in control that I don't see with Brent I don't see that in his life this guy was fully in charge of everything everybody all around him there had been rumors too that he was up for six days before he died well those of you who have been with musicians or anyone who's an artist realize that when they're really being creative there are days you're going to have to go in there and bring them food drag them into the shower take them back make sure they're eating and drinking if you can get them out of the room to do that um people who are really in the zone are like that and he was like that there's been reports of that that he would sit in a room and create for days and days and days we know that he had been on a plane we know that they had to make an emergency stop there's a lot of flu going around it looks like it was more flu and turned into pneumonia and the boy was this wide like how much strength you're gonna have we're getting hit by absolutely everything on this planet are we not everything and part of it I'm not going to blame the Illuminati for I'm going to blame people for this people like you, people like me we can't blame the Illuminati for Americans dumping 
80 million pounds of pesticides on their lawns each year. And this is people all over the world doing that. You can only use the mother for so long. And then you're going to pay for that. We haven't learned what the payment will be completely. But we've been told we're going through the sixth extinction. That's not a joke. This is happening. And it's because of what we've done. And what we've done to change this earth, even in the last 40 years, is horrific. It's horrific. We are following under a rule. Francis Bacon's scientific method rule. His steps. Now, this was another guy. It was all about killing the mother or raping it. Unfortunately, the men in charge, especially of the beginning of science, had an agenda and had some deep, deep hatred of women and hating nature issues. That explains the situation that our planet is in. We are meant to be something completely different here. Now, I know that I look at it differently than most people, but let's talk about this. Let's bring it down to a real basic biological level. We breathe out. Trees breathe, breathe in. This is the nature of our existence here. You know, we've talked a lot about becoming evolved in the higher human. People are talking about living on light. I have said before that I think our, our nudity, lack of fur, is because we're supposed to live on light. All the plants live on what we exhale. Do you not think that that's what we were supposed to be living on? We've heard stories of men in the garden, even the Adam and Eve thing. But let's look at the Adam and Eve thing a little differently again. Because they've just shown, they've just shown, that when a sperm meets an egg, light is created. Let there be light. Light. There is a spark. It changes the story for me. And the other thing is, if we did not have churches and, and sanctuaries and all the religious trappings right on the middle of our ley lines, right on the most important intersections of our ley lines. If we weren't wearing shoes, if we weren't covering our bodies at the most important times of day when we should be getting the sun, and we were real caretakers of the garden, because I think that's what it means. Forget the snake. Forget the Jesus and the Satan and the, the God, we biologically, physically are supposed to be doing this. We breathe in, we breathe out. They breathe in, they breathe out. There's all kinds of different plants on this planet. And it goes back to some of the questions that people keep asking me. I'm thinking of doing, doing a new Facebook page called This is a Dumbass's Question Ever. But I know dumbasses. Dumbassist is not really a word. But how did the ancient peoples know what plants were power plants? I think before we could see them, when our feet were touching the ground, because we're meant to be grounded. This is the electrical force of the planet that should be going through your body. It's an electrical charge that we're really eating. It's an electrical charge that is really spurring your movements here. In order to live on light, 
we would have to go back to that. That means bombing every church and getting them off our ley line intersections. We used to just put a couple little rocks there. That's it. A couple little rocks, maybe a little circle. Then we started building monuments around them. That's trapping the energy. And then we have cities, which is, you know, something else. I've mentioned before about the people who t took over and gave us a religion, gave us a guy, a good guy, a bad guy, a head guy. There's a, a whole bunch of friggin' guys, and no wonder it all goes back to the balls. Ball religion. Because all of these spring from one particular tree, do they not? which is still pointing at what we're supposed to be doing here. Breathing in, breathing out, being the gardeners. There are so many kinds of plants which we are doing a really good job at wiping out now. Do you think something that they told us is a weed is bad? No. We are killing them. And we are helping this killing them. So the trees that they've given us now that have taken away the real meaning because it was a tree it was supposed to be a tree are now the collective hide mind much the same system the reptilians are noted to be on and that's why the god of the old testament is so adamant about keeping the bloodline pure keeping the bloodline pure was mentioned in under the cherry moon by the way. So this also exists with all the so-called elite of today. Although it is now quite clear, since they continue to cut themselves off from the source and have always cut themselves off of nature, they wanted to tame Mother Nature. They are on the decline as far as the spiritual energy and power grid of this planet. Their God has become science. This is Scion. Later became Zion. And science has the limitations of discovery. Discovery is limited by the mind that attempts to make that discovery. This is why they have to use minds of others to figure things out. This was the Enochian command, given that universities, universe cities, from an ancient word that means a power plant, should be erected and mind should be harnessed to the will and the idealism of the controllers, the balls. I love saying that are constantly interacting with men. They are also called angels. Here are a few of the collective that we will be discussing. Before we do, so it should be clear that everyone in this world is not Canaanite. There were people here before this segment just as there will be people here after. Saying that a person cannot reach the Creator unless they go through your God is ridiculous. It is heresy. It is blasphemy at the various level. Because you are meant physically, biologically to be here and connect with everything here. Again, you breathe in, they breathe out. You breathe out, they breathe in. That's probably the end of the friggin' story. That's what we're supposed to do. And that's easy and obvious. So many things have come into existence that know nothing of this small rock called Earth. To say that they will not reach the Creator because of something on Earth? that they had no way of knowing shows just about how programmed many have been to even think in such a way. So what is the value? 
And what is of value? I guess it's for everyone to understand this whole thing means prison to the mind. That's pre-Zion. And has brought about constrictions that do not allow the soul to truly flourish because you have you have clothes on. Take your clothes off. Go outside. <laughs> Meet the neighbors. Well, be careful about that. You know, get you arrested. You'll be taken to prison. So even if it was all true about the gods and the kings and, you know, the guy, which I think it is not, because it is still not working, as an intelligent species, surely we could design a better way And that's what I want to do now. To bring forth a clearer way. We have Uranus. And Aronus. El, the bull god. Kronos, who is Saturn. Hermes, who is Mercury. And Saint Germain. And um, Alapaz Levy. Zeus, Jesus, Isu, Oceanus, Osiris, Ones, Janus, Two-Faced, Fork-Tongued, Dagon, Pendragon, Baal, Baal, Abel, Baphomet, Batman, Odin, Woden, Votan, Vulcan, Venus, Vera Concha, Quetzalcoatl, Enoch, Hanak, Moloch, Tubal Cain, Smith, Noah, um, Ante Pakistan, it's one of those really long Indian words. Abraham, the Brahmas, not a singing group, by the way. Isaac, Jacob, Nimrod, Melchizedek, the king Hiram of Tyre, Michael, the devil, Christ, Antichrist, Satan, saints, Lucifer, light workers, Leviathan, Levite priests, and of course their concert, Ashara, who is Hera, who is Asheroth, who is Astare, who is Venus, who is Inanna, who is Isis, who is a tree. And a planet surrounded by CO2. As a tree would be. As a plant. Planet would be. And various other names that describe the same thing. A good guy, a bad guy. All of these beings with their various stories and quarrels with each other should be looked at as one big dysfunctional family with the sole ability of being in the know about a couple of things and nothing else. And this is how they control by keeping you out of that loop. I want to fix that. And many of these beings are the exact same thing. Just as it is still a custom for the mother or the father to name the child after them, this is even a greater trend in the old days. As you see with the royal families, you have Louis the Thirteenth, Prince Philip the Fourth, and on and on and on. So Saturn Moses, Hades, Pan, all in the family. So the fight that continues amongst them, all, is who will control what by rising through principalities and getting people to believe in them, to boost their energy. Just like the royal parliament and the politicians. And if you do not believe in them, they begin to threaten with untold atrocities. But their favorite punishment is fire. They are fire gods and take pleasure in burnt offerings, holocausts. 
The volcano is named as such because of Photon and Vulcan. And because the so-called elite feel as if they must go out for the gods as Devas and pelt their foes with nuclear, uranium, plutonium arsenals, we have Cain in the land of Nod. And Cain's true genealogy is separated between two stories. The one in the Bible is known to be wrong. In addition, many of these names do not just describe a person, but a race of beings. So keep that in mind. It is either Cain is the offspring of a union of Eve and the serpent Samuel, or between a random union with Adam and Lilith Lilu, Lili, Luet, Liliet. It also appears very vividly that there is ability to create spirits with words. So basically the Kabbalah is a hybrid Lego system. With unpredictable outcomes for the novice who evokes in carelessness. Magic does not tolerate your disbelief. It is very real. I say that on my feet, not my knees. And when you know who you are, and the unlimited space of who you shall continue to be, nothing can convince you. Edgewise, demons, men, gods. You can't. There's nothing to be done once you really get this. There really isn't. And when you look and break down these things piece by piece. It's obvious why we're here. Those things out there need this thing right here. And except we are not naked, we are not walking the grids because there's bullshit erected on them. Because men have taken stories of women and demonized them. Because they need control. Lilith is symbolized by the lily. And that lily is the fleur-de-lis. And of course the controllers claim to be the bloodline of Christ. Which in turn is linked to the bloodline of many kings. Who have proclaimed their allegiance to Lucifer. Out in the friggin' open. Once again, the play is that they are the same thing. They work with collective power. It is the only way they can succeed, and they are failing. Even part of their collective have overcome them and broken free. Like a man's prince. He said that he didn't care. The last thing he said was, I don't care what happens. I have done what I came here to do. And I've been noble about it. And I've been steadfast. And I walk the straight line. So, there's that. And then there's the story of the golem, or the dodi, that gains a third sense and is endowed with the ability to engage. A machine waits to be engaged, just like a computer does. Many people are just waiting, or weighing. They are getting fatter. Doubt it not, they are getting heavy, and they are going deeper into sleep. The opposite is also happening, and many Many are becoming very awake and aware. Now Cain as Smith. Cain is a Canaanite archetype. He is Smith, or the fashioner of weapons. This is also Smith in the Matrix. This is why another part of the Matrix deception was to show Neo 
merging with Smith in the end, which would make Smith the one, not Neo. But the word knights, as in knights of the round table, is nothing more than that. K-N-ites. Canaanites. So Canaan. Cain is Khan. Cohen. Coin. Khan as in Genghis. And King. Cain is said to be endowed with a subterranean chamber in the center of the earth. He is said not to be dead, but to be sleeping, where his ideas, dreams, still affect the thoughts of mortal men. This myth continues that on the arrival of a new golden age, Cain will return to shepherd his flock of believers who are preparing his way to the surface. This is highly possible that a giant man depicted in the inverted golden age of Aquarius is Cain. This is the story itself is identical to Cthulhu, to the Kraken, and many other dreaming gods such as Orpheus, Morpheus, half-dead gods, suspended in animation. This is the knights of the round table. This is their king, who is supposed to be sleeping in a secret realm. And such are the secrets passed around the ancient Egypt about living under decession as a vampiric demigod. It is true, the masses of people do not do things until they feel it is the most necessary, because this is the domestication. Even the fleshly man is no longer wild animal. He has been domesticated, waiting to be fed, waiting to be instructed, waiting to be terminated, always waiting, waiting on Jesus, waiting on the Mahdi, waiting on Horus, waiting on Q. You get the point. There is Nemos of Persia, Addis, Africa, Krishna of India, Bacchus of the Greeks, Buddha of India, Savalhana of Oh, Bermuda, Zul of Egypt, Horus of Kemet, Odin of the Celts, Criti of the Chaldeans, Zoroaster of Persia, Taut of Venosia, Indra of Tibet, Bali of Afghanistan, Jao of Nepal, Thamus of Syria, Ada of Assyria, Mikodo of the Sintus, Bedru of Japan, Eros of the Druids, Cadus of the Greeks, Adonis of Io, Io, which is funny, became our symbol for in out, Prometheus of Caucasus, and many, many more. Sacrificed Savior that many people died waiting on and probably coming back, waiting, and dying again. Imagery says everything. It is a man of strength, beaten to a pulp, humiliated, put on a cross. They are not marketing the risen Savior. They prefer the crucified one, in particular. When the true spirit body becomes wind or gets wind of what is happening and wakes the hell up time is over literally why would we need time when we didn't need to eat didn't need to eat you wouldn't need to wait 
because you'd sit and you would breathe out and you would walk amongst and you would know what the beings of the plants were what they did what you were you would know it would be enough you'd be at an age of like a child where you didn't have to question these things they would just be here our things have been taken in addition many of these gods are forgotten because they are called the forgotten ones and they are being re-erected by mortal man and woman in their fascination for worship these beings which include man-made gods carry the title once dead now alive the unconscious worshiper is being used for these tasks praise the Lord means raise the Lord these types of people will always be workers not the owners the members not the pastor the disciple not the guru so in this state you will never know we see rap singers throwing money in the air you see a billionaire do that you see a real billionaire go on a TV show no he sits back and he owns that shit so until you realize it's entirely up to you and you alone to get up and get ready to track higher in your existence you will remain in dominion being subsequently and subconsciously controlled by the deluded and those not thinking clearly for various reasons they suffer from ideas of supremacy which are the most infectious to the clouded mind it is the chosen one program and it is very difficult in this time to dissect this I'll be right back you're listening to Trace Elements Radio Hang on. Welcome back, everyone. Shall we continue? They can't take an atom from us. They can't. In the beginning, there were single-celled creatures with no DNA, so that's BS that that's a big deal. Because things can go on for a very long time with zero DNA. Then they combine to make more and more complex creatures dinosaurs elephants all kinds of things all the things that are still here now sixth extinctions know that you still hold the same atom atoms that were always here you are part dinosaur anything that dies here becomes part of the earth this is Adam. We contain him, her, them. The creative force cannot be destroyed and they cannot hold lordship over that. So, it's, it has become difficult to dissect and break this down. But anything in nature shows you exactly what you are and what you're supposed to be doing they breathe out we breathe in so it's not about religious diatribes here and debunking you either have those who have read every book and judged it as such of course but they have never attended in spirit and in truth or you have those who just follow blindly along using the same technique as many of our unfortunately short-lived ancestors this is one of the blind unwarranted trust that usually goes along with sacrifice our ancestors in history have been forced in many cases to be worshippers 
in such cases in such states are not our way they are not natural they like to say animals are worshiping the creator too well that is the clue they are not worshiping in any way like man is with sacrifices and ceremonies and the like and we've come from a long line of people who lost their way. Case in point, a mass grave was just found of 3,000. They're calling them human giants. This is in Ohio. These are Nephilim. These are Norse men. And the site is one of the forts. has a mass grave. These people were slaughtered when the Algonquin Indians invaded from Canada and wiped them out to the last breath. There are mounds situated in the eastern part of the village of Connecticut, extensive burying ground near what is now um, Presbyterian Church because the Presbyterian Church is on a ley line. It appears to have no connection with the burial places of any of the natives that were here. The human bones found in these mounds belong to men, gigantic of structure, because they were Vikings. Period. There were big guys. There are still big guys that have Norsemen DNA. We still have seven foot people here on this planet. The giant ancestors don't go away. We still contain every atom. We do. Everything that has been here is here now. So I want to be clear. Reverence is sometimes at hand. And there is no harm in casting crowns. This is no different than watching a magnificent act and admiring an actor for the splendid performance. However, if one starts to look at the actor as a type of savior, escape, goat, a genie in a bottle or a possible way to cheat or get ahead in life through some unseen advantage this behavior becomes questionable and should be paid attention to if this goes a step further and the person is then willing to prostrate themselves to beg to entreat to bequest or even sacrifice what is precious to them then they have become open to the infectious force that is being quarantined from the galaxy the worshipping warships and these days a person is easy to determine something as true when they one have an experience in it that is life-changing such as a genuflection with the deities or the spirits themselves because the spirits the netters the nature is still here we still breathe in and breathe out and we are not alone in that breathing we are responded to and number two have people that they know and respect that are involved so they are taking blind advice and directing them three following the masses assuming that out of millions involved people have done their homework about the authenticity of what is being believed at that moment this 
has left the world in the state it is in now. And thus there are only two types of people, those who truly know and those who are not in the know. Those that are not in the know are further divided into two factions. Those who are pretending to know and those who could care less about knowing anything. There's a famous story in the Bible that begins with twelve tribes. Of course, those twelve tribes are meant to mean all the descendants of the earth, but more importantly, all the descendants of the quadrant of space, which is being called the sea, or the holy sea. This is the twelve signs of the zodiac that govern the procession of the character traits and influences on the earth. And there is also the hidden, the thirteenth sign. This works no different than bad company. Certain strong celestial bodies place themselves at certain points to influence the composition of newborn stars. Although one can be influenced by a strong celestial body, just as they have been influenced by their parents' traits at times. All things are within the power and the scope of the mind, and many discover their uniqueness way beyond the preconditioned, the pre-programming. So, summing this up, the entire story of the Bible is that of confusion because that is how it begins, with men and these strange, jealous beings. Genesis 11, 7, 8. Let, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth. We have been trained to accept such things. And when you break the yoke of control, you see that deception. We have come together as strong spirits and set straight the heresy and the limitations of our species by these beings that are not the majority and never were even in mind and in strength. A tiny atom contains the power of 1,000 oans. How many do you think are inside you? They are countless. You that stand before me with at least 50 trillion cells. 50 trillion. You were never alone. Ever. It's not possible. So it starts first with knowing. Then you will gain the path of exactly what to do from your position. In every one of those 50 trillion cells are universe unto themselves. A body unto itself that could make up your own body, just one of them has everything you need. And their time is literally marked when the God of the Bible decided that man had reached beyond his perceived or preconceived limitations in pure connection with everyone and everything. What could only be next would be, of course, total unity. This is a very important moment to point out as it is about to happen again, one way or the other. We are beginning to speak one language once more. We want to be free. We want to be whole. We want the animals to be free and whole because they are needed. They breathe in. They breathe out. 
they have a job here. And most importantly, we want our planet to be free and be whole. So what are we on the brink of? Will history repeat itself again? Or will we be much more aware and awake this time? The so-called elite are flirting with danger in a scramble to get more information and more control by the invention of the computer. The computer presents a common language when used properly, as it is, well, it has several proficient translators. Everyone is now available to see what we have been told and that we have been told the same story. No matter how much we have been told it is different, it is special, it is unique to our particular chosen race, that is not true. No religious story is played more than the crucified Savior story, the death of an enlightened human. This is the birth and death of an externalized God who is ever masquerading around as the Creator. But it is yet to fully comprehend its pointless potential. So let us examine the similarities that exist across the board. One can rule over twelve. That's their concept. Jesus, twelve disciples, and a serpent over all mammals. Notice how there is no snake in the zodiacs or in the animals of the zodiacs, but it is the most revered animal in ancient lore here. This is because it remains the hidden one. Twelve disciples, twelve tribes, twelve months, twelve judges, twelve patriarchs, twelve princes. After Zeitgeist, many believe the whole Jesus story itself to be astrological. But it is much more than that. And seeing it as such takes one even further away from the truth, to be honest. When millions of people believe in something, it has enough strength with that alone to manifest from the ether. So the story in itself is one that many attempts to emulate, to raise themselves as gods. If you will find a willing vessel to worship and believe in them, they can live on in a person's mind and be just as real as you and me. It is a fact that this entire matrix exists within the mind. It is very real. The term illusion should only be used to determine if you, well, if whether you are awake, in experience, or asleep. And the method of deification has been monopolized. Rather than one believing and trapping into or tapping into their inner connection, they are directed to believe in some animalistic, externalized God who craves control over beings that are weak and helpless or know no better. I will bring up a certain king. King Minus strongest prototype of this founder, king, god, by divine right idea. This reflects in how many kings of history have been names derived of Minus, Menes of Egypt, Manus of Germany, Manu of India, and they are all basically war gods. It talks about the Hebrews in the Bible wanting a king and no longer wishing to associate with the Creator, which is inside them, but wanting something external to rule over them, 
So they were given Saul, S-A-L, or S-A-U-L, which translates to serpent, as in salamander. And as I've said, Minus, son of Zeus, bears a remarkable resemblance to Saturn, Kronos, and many of these bearded gods. And one should begin marking the trail now. Saturn, Cronus, Zeus, and all the deities from the Greek pantheon, related to the serpent, not only by their own imagery, but also because all come from Uranus or Uranus. It states in the esoteric lore, Uranus or Ureus, or the fire-spitting serpent that is often seen at the headpiece of the pharaoh. He is the father of all of them. So thus, if he is a serpent, the rest of his offspring would be at least half-serpent. This is by far not enough time to explain Io, Abraxas, and the sun gods that go by the symbol of usually the rooster or zoroaster and how Jesus Ben Panther relates to this all. I haven't told you about Jesus Ben Panther yet. Let me tell you about him. Maybe today. So I will say, as I always do, to say every serpent is bad is just as silly as saying all men are good. Christianity, however, has some of the heaviest ties with the serpent, but represents itself as having nothing to do with the serpent, although they talk about the serpent a lot. Nothing can be more deceptive than to make people hate the serpent than slightly make them worship it. When they find such things out, if they ever do, they are generally taken aback, in shock, and go to extreme denial, regardless of the facts. Even worse, in most cases, they just agree to worship the serpent, and then the New Age movement loves to cater to that notion. A sad lot, they are. Then we jump to Numbers 21.8 And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when looketh upon it, shall live. Moses is instructed to raise the brazen serpent. Um, Nahashtan, brazen serpent, closest, I guess, so that all look upon it and can be healed. Silently, this is the entry of Jesus, as they would in many books later be raised upon a tree, cross, for the people to look upon him and be saved. But of course, I'll believe Jesus has no relation to the serpent. This is false. It can only exist in belief systems of those who do not know. The pew writers that never examine what the priests are up to and whence their power comes. They are just as dangerous because it is their energy being used to fuel the war that is not so silent but taking place on the opposite side of the globe. In addition, Christianity continues to pretend that it has no direct offense to the belief systems and their corresponding gods. Not the other ones. They tell the members that they use the gentle method of conversion 
In the meantime, much worse than crusaders are taking place in the spirit world, as any real adept has seen the deepest magic books, especially related to the Jesuits, are riddled with the name of Jesus as a source of the energy to spells. This is the cult of the Iasu under these logos or Lodge I H S I N R I etc. I E S U Well Revelations ends with the new Zion in which the so called elite or chosen are raised into the sky into a new Jerusalem that sits above the earth. It is from this location they imagine that they will watch this chaos, this torment prophesied about the earth. And of course, it has been prophesied by them and also conducted by them, acting in the place of their God, making us do their work. We're the ones building the machines. We're the ones working in the factories. We are the ones tilling the fields. Not so much now, but... They've made us do their bidding. They have already proclaimed he acts through them, though. But in actuality, it's really just them. Just like the Pope. And this means that all the silly believers who never do what the Bible tells them to do anyway will be manifesting their own destruction out of guilt and shame. Two of the lowest vibrations. This prediction, if not overturned, is really a gender 21. Switch those numbers around. That's the 12. That's the A. The depopulation sanctioned by the UN, Thule, the V, praying and worshipping for horrible deaths. They are, if they are not warned to see such insolence. All the believers want is the last days. They are constantly manifesting living in the last days. So now it is upon them. And they're not ready. They're not prepared because they have been misinformed, misled. This has happened because they have been consciously and subconsciously judging everyone but themselves. So it's clear, unless something drastically changes. This mode of Ideology. There will be carnage. Carnage is happening. Up here we have another two reserves where the children are killing themselves. Not attempting this time. Doing it. It is happening. But of course it's not a surprise to see death happening in a place that was meant to bring death. These are concentration camps. But so are cities. So don't think they have forgotten of you, my brothers and sisters. And again, that is for those who are choosing to believe in such things during this greatest era also of manifestation. The key to this age is whatever you imagine will happen to you will happen. This is why the constantly stay at work in attempting to guide people's thoughts. They do. And they've never stopped. You know. There's been one horror event after another. 
If you manifest greatness, that's what you'll be. Manifest servitude, and you will see there are endless controllers vying for your energy. Do something that is going to increase you. And that's what I propose. I am more than this most high. I see beyond it that vesica in the sky, the binary rabin way to this world, just opposed in its masculine feminine fractal, the movements of the hermetic greats, the side real place of the no time, the hive mind palace of the cells, the carbon and the faces on perception. That journey to the center of the earth, the Enochian cycle phase, the Omega machine, the droids of the old one. So with that being said, I've seen all this with my own little eyes, my own aura, my multiple portals. And there is a path that can be forged beyond it. This path has been grown over, I understand, from lack of use. We plan to make a superhighway on this path, and you are more than welcome. If someone says impossible, you should understand that it is according to their limitations, their limited experience, and narrow understanding of reality. Justin Martyr wrote to say that he, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was produced without sexual union, was crucified and died, rose again, ascended into heaven. We propound nothing different from what you believe regarding the sons of Jupiter. We must find a way. And there is. It's simple. We are made simple beings. We really are. We overthink it. We do. Obviously overthink this. Because we spend our entire lives concealing our emotions. That's why there's language. Hiding our true feelings. We wonder why we do so. Because they have trained us to do so. But there's no reason for it. There's no reason at all. We can live an enlightened life. Because we are always meant to. this again, and I want to finish how I brought it up last, well, Tuesday? It was Tuesday. and didn't finish. About the homo luminous. Because we are the light bearers. That they told us was Lucifer, that is a lie, that is us. This is how we create. When an egg and a sperm meet, there is light. And now it kind of explains how, um, why that was good. <laughs> and they screwed up the best story ever. Of course it was good. We like it. So to bring clarity to this statement, the body is a cage. A carbon-based structure. It is 666. This six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. The name is the number of a man, and he is the beast. He is everything that has ever been, will ever be. Even if we die, if everything here is wiped out and for a million years this lays dormant, it is our atoms that will rise up. And when the spirit is strong enough to subdue the beast, one becomes a master of their own primary reality 
able to bend and break the quantum rules of this reality. This is the birth of the Homo Luminous that could happen before their end of the world thing. Fight, my brothers and sisters. What is available at this point is access to the higher planes and existence of everything by the right of power. And it should be clear that the transformation to this bright thing has nothing to do with a good or an evil. The Homo Lunis has been achieved by individuals. We have heard them. We have seen them. It is the laws of karma and dharma. They still apply, but one need to look closer at these things. Consider what they actually mean, because it's not really understood, at least by the Western mind, because, you know, we've been so hooked. Sometimes it's confused with the simple notion that you do not, that if you do good, you will see good in return, and edgewise. It's shallow. It's not true. It's not factual. Life is but a moment. That's so where the first thing that is presented is the non-existence of time or the ability to be outside of time. In the time it takes one to blink their eye, one comes into an environment, moves several things around, be out of your eye, your eye reopens. Vibration of light is that of light speed. Dense fleshly forms move as though they are rocks. And even a rock itself is moving. However, its vibration allows you to believe it is not moving. Having access to wavelengths allows you to perceive that there is so much more going on. And as you can see, the powers that be in this world have prevented most of us from ever realizing this. That this can be brought within your own vessel, your ark, your ship. This has been done for multiple reasons. The obvious being it's extremely difficult to control someone who is powerful. Their ability to, again, proceed beyond the veil. The illusion or matrix that has been carefully woven into society. An effect of sleepwalking citizens or drones or turning us into Gollum. Pre-programmed. So the presence of hyper-dimensional beings becomes apparent as they are all now even now controlling and guiding men to beginnings and endings. Positive homoluminous will stand none of this. Negative homoluminous will propagate it further. And it will be horrific. And this has happened in many esoteric circles of those who possess the knowledge of their own activation of their body. Doubt it not that many do not consider what to do with the power before they get it and the greed for energy which exists in all humans to some degree and must be addressed before power is added. You get a little power it makes you hungrier. This is why the first being who ate did not say stop. Or maybe one of the beings who saw him do it wanted to try. Maybe it started with a plant. Maybe it started with a sacred plant. Maybe it started then it went to burning. 
from burning it goes to animals. And on and on and on. Could have stopped any time. And then we built temples. And then we sacrificed more things. And then we saw other people's things and wanted those people's things. And then there were kings who were saying that they knew the way around this new thing. Then they hired us to work for them and kill for them. And we forgot that we were the same things. And on and on and on. And then we have today where we are watching our planet on fire. All of our wonderful things dying. All of our beautiful lands tearing themselves apart. And the earth wobbling. She's wobbling because we are not solid. We are no longer grounded. How can she spin properly without the wobble if we were still centered and grounded and walking barefoot on the lines? All of our people you know, I put up a picture. Ancient, apparently. These pictures are all over the world that show a hundred thousand years before it was supposed to be happening. People of all different colors. Their hands. Just their hands. For me, that's enough. They don't need to say anything else. That we are here together. In this maybe still third dimension, the power remains unbalanced and unperfected as the earth, which is on a wobble, makes its own personal ascension. This is imminent. This must happen. She will not take this forever. The sheer fact that esoteric knowledge and the desire of its acquisition is becoming so prevalent is enough indication to me, showing me that graduation is on the horizon. what I think. That we are close. We may be much closer than has ever happened before. Standing at the edge. I still think it's a choice. Because the outer world only mirrors your inner world. And when emotions begin to erupt in us, sometimes it is easy not to look inwards in order to find the root cause of these negative feelings, emotions. Instead, we look outwards. We blame our anger on others, which might seem justified sometimes. But it doesn't help. The actual problem, it certainly doesn't make it go away. The people that we attract into our lives are there to serve us in some way. This is how our biome works. We breathe in, we breathe out. Even couples. The closer you are to someone, your heart rate matches. Your breathing starts to match. This is what we do. So whether it be to help us feel positive or negative emotions or both. The more you grow and change in life, the more people you attract into your life with the same vibration as you. So if you're getting a lot of negative people, it's not their fault. So if you cultivate more positive emotions and thoughts within your waking life, you will attract similar things. Those people that are the negative force in your life may be the past of the matter. They may represent emotions and thought that you have outgrown. And so these people no longer serve you. If you have resistance towards letting negative people go or out of your life, it could mean that there's something you are to learn from them. Either way, you are to look inwards and understand, understand which relationship serves you in your life and what does not. That's it.
If you should find negative emotions stem from a few people in your life, then you should examine your emotions more closely by finding what fear you are feeling when you express a negative emotion to yourself or someone else. You will be able to find some reoccurring emotion that is holding you back from becoming the most positive version of yourself. You will begin to sense that your whole external world is a mirror, only reflecting back on what you see and what you send. This is the real law of attraction. This is how it works. As your thoughts at any moment are what create your future. We've heard seven generations before. This is how it works for you too. It's not such a far away thing. You know. Our life is right here. What's happening to us is right here and right now. We can change this right here and right now. Doesn't have to be fancy. And we realize there is a lot going on that is horrific. The NSA and the CIA have their new no touch torture system. It's live, it's online, it's soft kill, whoever they want dead. No accountability. This is what the governments want to do. I would like them to stop raping and killing children. To stop protecting pedophiles. Who is involved? DEFCON, Star Wars, Raytheon, Missile Defense, the Microwave Weapon Magnetic Pulse Array System by Nazi Raytheon and Hillary Red Mist Clinton and the pedophile chemtrail cult that claim that there is a possible missile attack on the United States at any moment now. When they want to poison someone, that's usually what they say. They get nanomites or chemtrails in targets and people are soft killed. This is why and this is how they get away with these fake terror threats threats. They are the true terrorists, have always been, and they work for someone else. That's it. The remote programs, the programming in Fort Meade, the Nazi pedophiles, CIA, Skull and Bones, Warlocks, they've programmed, they've made this evil system, the NSA, which is still Nazis, the CIA and also gave access to the soft kill system in the Gulf Gypsy Kind House Sinola Human Trafficking Necromongers Cults yes they're still around I have not ignored them I have not forgotten them I just don't think they're strong enough I don't think they could beat us. Not really. Not when we really look at who we are, who and what we are. And by the way, I realize I haven't told you much news, but why is the White House on lockdown for the second day in a row? Is it a secret service joke? Have you noticed the bulge from the first fake male hijacker the first lady first lady <laughs> I don't know but I have noticed that the White House seems to be on lockdown if you notice that why? what's going on? anything in the papers? because the executive mansion has been on lockdown for the second time in less than 24 hours the lockdown is due to something unknown, a situation, I guess, according to reporters in the press briefing room.
The president is believed to be in the White House. Secret Service told um, RT that it might be an hour before it's lifted. So the lockdown was prompted by a package containing papers. It was from a pope and a phone that was thrown over the fence. CNN said that. The Secret Service, which apparently protects the President, and the White House is still checking for threats. A man was taken into custody for throwing these personal things over the fence. North Lawn. Secret Service. Said. So the closure on Wednesday morning after 11 a.m. local time. On Tuesday, the White House um, placed a, a brief lockdown after a robbery suspect fleeing the scene jumped over the fence outside the Eisenhower Executive Building. The lockdown was lifted about a half an hour later. So the man is accused of stealing a woman's purse around quarter to four near Pennsylvania Avenue, then spotted Secret Service uniformed divisions, officers patrolling around this area, and then the official familiar I'm sorry, I have to call him that, with the situation news. The suspect then jumped the fence to flee the agents, cutting his hand. Taken into custody, no incident, the Secret Service said. Treated by EMTs. But the suspect did not appear to know he had hopped the fence into one of the most protected areas of D.C. The man did not get near the White House? What is that? Is that not the strangest thing ever? <laughs> That's a little weird. How do you not know what fence you just jumped? I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure. <laughs> the world gets crazier and crazier. I understand that. And I know a lot of people are very sure that that prince was killed. I don't know. Oh, wait. I want to hear more. Not ex little stuff. I want to know for sure. Because we realize there's all kinds of things happening right now. All kinds of things. And that we are being surveilled on absolutely every method. That's probably why the internet is so slow. It's probably why there are so many, so many things going on on the planet. Especially with the power grid. We're having a hard time. I get that. Physically, we're having a hard time. We're disconnected. I live on the sixth floor. How, are you, how do you connect with the Earth on, from the sixth floor? Let's be honest. It's not possible. Barefoot. All the time. We have to do a lot more things to even try and connect. We do. To try to get the sun with all this overcastness and I realize people will say it's all chemtrails, but the guy who helped try and build the first nuclear plant said, you can't put it with an aluminum. You can't. Or there will be aluminum in the skies. So here we are, everyone, and I hope you have a nice end of the week and a nice weekend. And stay strong, my brothers and sisters. I'm here because you're here.